Find the four point DFT of two sequences X of n and Y of n using a single four point DFT. The two sequences are given as X of n is equal to 1, 2, 0, 1 and Y of n is equal to 2, 2, 1, 1. The problem clearly mentions that using only a single four point DFT you have to be able to compute the DFT of two sequences. And the two sequences are X of n and Y of n, each being a four point DFT. Therefore, the method here would be to create a single sequence out of these two sequence. Let us create a complex sequence called as H of n, where X of n contributes to the real part and Y of n contributes to the imaginary part. Therefore, this sequence is called as H of n. The values become 1 plus 2j, 1 coming from X of n and 2 coming from Y of n. Similarly, 2 plus 2j, 0 plus j, so it has only imaginary part, 1 plus j. Therefore, this is the complex sequence. Now, for this complex sequence, let us calculate the DFT. When you compute the DFT of this particular sequence, you may apply the matrix method or the direct method of the formula and you need to calculate the DFT called as H of K. Here we are applying the matrix method. So the input is expressed as a row and here we have the twiddle factor matrix for DFT. We perform multiplication as we have discussed row into column and the output is something like this. So the DFT is called as H of K, which is a four point sequence, four plus six J, two minus two and two J. Now to proceed in this method, we need to calculate what is H conjugate of K. Now H conjugation is called as the complex conjugate. So wherever you have an imaginary term, change the sign of that imaginary term. The first term becomes 4 minus 6j. These two values are real, they remain as it is. The last term is imaginary, we change it. Now, we have to apply a formula to arrive at the DFT of x of n and y of n. The formula is something like this. h of k plus h conjugate of minus k mod n divide by 2. Therefore, substituting the value of k is equal to 0 up to k is equal to 3 will yield the four individual DFT points. Now, substituting the value of k is equal to 0, we get x of 0 equals h of 0 plus h conjugate of 0. So, since we are taking mod 4, under mod 4, 0 is a permitted value. So the numerator is h of 0 plus h conjugate of 0 divided by 2. So h of 0 is obtained from the first sequence, whereas h conjugate of 0 is obtained from the second sequence. Add up the two values and divide by 2, we get 8 by 2 equals to 4. Similarly, the next point, k is equal to 1, we get x of 1 is equal to h of 1 plus h conjugate of minus 1 mod 4 divided by 2 is equal to h of 1 plus h conjugate of 3 divided by 2. Because minus 1, when you apply mod 4, we have to add a value plus 4 and we get the answer is 3. Therefore, you have to identify in the top sequence, the value h of 1 is 2 and h conjugate of 3 is the last element in the second sequence. So, inserting both the values and performing the addition and divide by 2, we get the answer is 1 minus j. Similarly, when you put the value of k is equal to 2, x of 2 equals h of 2 plus h conjugate of minus 2 mod 4. Simplifying this, you get h conjugate of 2. Then inserting the values, we get minus 2 and minus 2 divide by 2, the answer is minus 2. And similarly, the last point will be k x of k is equal to 3, x of 3 becomes h of 3 plus h conjugate of minus 3 mod 4. Solving this, 
we get h conjugate of 1 that's whole divided by 2 and substituting the values 2j plus 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1 plus j. So in accordance to this we have found the four points corresponding to x of k and we list out the four sequence outputs. So the answer is 4 1 minus j minus 2 1 plus j. Let us now proceed to the part corresponding to y of k. Now if the formula here had a plus symbol, here we have minus. So this was addition, here it is subtraction and we have to divide it by equal by 2j. So here it is 2 and here we have 2j. So in accordance to this formula now, you have k is equal to 0 which is y of 0 equals h of 0 minus h conjugate of 0 divided by 2j. Uh, fortunately for us the values will be the same but the arithmetic is slightly changed. So we take the points 4 plus 6j which is h of 0 and minus negative of uh, 4 minus 6j is minus 4 plus 6j whole divided by 2j. Uh, we have to be a little careful when we are doing uh, addition and division for complex numbers. The result of simplification is y of 0 equals 6. Next point similarly is calculated by taking k value equals to 1 y of 1 is h of 1 minus h conjugate of minus 1 mod 4 divided by 2j and simplification gives you h of 1 minus h conjugate of 3 by 2j and the answer of that simplification is 1 minus j. Similar approach we can solve for k value which is equal to 2 and when you take k value equals to 2 we understand that you will get the value of y of 2 and the substitution of that will look like h of h of 2 minus h conjugate of minus 2 mod 4 divided by 2j which will be equal to h of 2 minus h conjugate of 2 whole divided by 2j. Next substitute the value of h of 2 and h conjugate of 2. So you will get the value after substitution. So you will get the value here as 0. The answer you get for this is particular term is 0. Okay. You substitute the values, you find out, you will get the result which is equal to 0 here. Okay. The final term is k is equal to 3. When you substitute the value, it is h of 3 minus h conjugate of minus 3 mod 4. The simplification of this is h of 3 minus h conjugate of 1 divided by 2j and the answer you will get is 1 plus j. Like this, as in the previous case, we have listed out the sequence y of k as 6, 1 minus j, 0, 1 plus j. So the important considerations here in this problem is the formula. First, we are expressing the sequence as a complex sequence provided the two input sequences are real. So when you're given two real inputs, you can combine and make a real uh, a sequence which is complex by taking real part from the first one and imaginary part from the second one. Next, we determine and we find the DFTs. So once you find the DFT of this complex sequence, we have to find the conjugate of it. Once you find the complex conjugate, then we have to apply the formula as shown here and this gives us the individual DFT x of k and y of k which is obtained or derived from the, uh, the previous DFT. So this will be the method. Take a look at the next problem. 
let x p of n be a periodic sequence with fundamental period capital N. So x p is mentioned to be periodic. Its fundamental period is capital N. If the n point dft of x p of n is denoted as x one of k, and 3n point, 3n corresponds to thrice the length. So here we are assuming the length of dft to be n. 3n is three times that length. Now this dft computed for 3n points is represented as x3 of k. Find the relationship between x1 of k and x3 of k. So first we start with listing out what is, what is given in the problem. What is given is n point dft of x of n is equal to x of k. This is from the definition of dft. So we are aware that n point dft of x of n is equal to x of k and it is given by the summation which is as shown. In the problem, in the data, they have given you that the input happens to be a periodic sequence called as xp of n for which if you calculate the endpoint DFT, let us write it symbolically as X1 of K as mentioned in the data. Therefore, X1 of K is simply the X of N replaced with XP of N. So this we are aware. Next, the three endpoint DFT XP of N is denoted as X3 of K is equal to summation N between zero to three N minus one. The input once again is XP of N but please remember we are doing 3n point dft therefore the n here will be also 3n. You see the limits, limits are from 0 to 3n minus 1 to signify it's a 3n point dft. Next, if we take this 3n point dft and we can split it into three summations, each summation will have n points in it therefore the first summation limit is n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 xp of n and then we have the total factor as it is. The second part we represent as xp of n plus capital N. This capital N denotes that the next set of n points will have an index which is uh, n greater than the previous. For example, if the first index is 0, here we should have a value which is n. So here we are covering the point 0 to n minus 1. The point after n minus 1 is said to be n which is obtained by adding a value equals to n. So therefore please note here we have n plus capital N, here also we have n plus capital N. Now the third set of points as you know with respect to the first should be displaced by 2n. Therefore here we have index n plus 2n and we have n plus 2n. Therefore we are depicting the three sets of n points each or we have partitioned into three sets. Next, after partitioning in this particular fashion, what shall we do next? Now here, we know that the given sequence is periodic and it has a period equals to n. Therefore, we can conclude that xp of n plus capital N is same as xp of n. Also, xp of n plus 2n is same as xp of n. That is from periodicity of the input. Therefore, due to this, we have changed these two terms. Also, the total factor in the second and third summations can be split and we obtain these values. We get W3 to the power of Kn, W3 to the power of Nk, W3 to the power of Kn and W3 to the power of Nk. Now, let us try to do some simplification or reduction in these total factors. So, we, we take the term W3 to the power of Nk here. You know, in the exponential form, you can write it as e power of minus j2 pi by 3n to the power of nk and n n cancels and we can write this as w3 raised to k. Similarly, w3 n raised to 2 nk becomes w3 to the power of 2k. Also, w3 n to the power of nk it can be expressed as Wn to the power of nk by 3. So this term is common for all the three summations. Correct? So let's do all the substitutions. Let's gather all the common terms. The common term in all the three is obviously the summation and the term xp of n 
and w three n to the power of k n, which is now expressed as w n to the power of n k by three. Therefore, the result is something like this. Summation n from zero to n minus one, x p of n is common. And what is the different term? For the first term, we have one. For the second summation, we have w three to the power of k, as we have observed. For the third one, we have w three to the power of two k. And once again, w n to the power of n k by three is common for all three. Since the quantity in the bracket does not involve n, it's a constant. You can take it outside the summation, and we can express like this. And the final term here, if you see, it looks like the definition of x one of k. X one of k was said to be the n point DFT of x p of n. But the change we notice is that. Rather than having simply k, we have k by three. Therefore, it can be called as x one of k by three, because in place of k we have k by three. So then the relationship between x one of k and x three of k is shown by the equation below. This is what was required, and we have obtained the result. That means that From x1 of k, we can compute the answer for x3 of k, that is the 3n point DFT, by substituting in the equation shown. So, for how many other values of k you want, you can substitute, and we'll get the answer. A couple of questions are listed out here, students, for your own uh, exercise. you can try this out and you can test your understanding about the problems the first problem states for the two sequences x1 of n equals 2 1 1 2 and x2 of n equals 1 minus 1 minus 1 plus 1 compute the circular convolution using dft and idft so in the exam when they say you calculate circular convolution using dft and idft you have you are bound to use the same method you cannot perform time domain method get the answer or you cannot use the matrix method of verifying the circular convolution you have to perform using this method alternatively the paper may state use stockham's method both are same both are same stockham's method or the method involving dft and idft so the method has been discussed so please try out the problem and test the result the same problem can be repeated for a different set of data for example let's say x1 of n is 2 1 2 1 and x2 of n is equal to 1 2 3 4 1 i i mentioned in the past instead of giving you the sequence directly they may give you an expression a simple equation like for example x1 of n is equal to x plus 1 or let's say uh, you have uh, x1 of n is equal to n plus 1 or sorry we can have x1 of n is equal to sin of something or cos of something so when you give an equation like that you can substitute the values of n and arrive at the sequence once you get see two sequence the problem will still be the same okay uh let's move on to the next question so these type of questions are Uh, not uncommon in the final exam if x of n is given as 1 2 0 3 -2 4 7 5 we evaluate the following so they are asking you to calculate a few values first one capital x of 0 x of 4 summation k is equal to 0 to 7 x of k summation k is equal to 0 to 7 x of k magnitude square first thing you have to observe that the input sequence is a real valued sequence now all this has to be computed without actually calculating the dft so you are not allowed to calculate dft of x of n so you cannot do 8 point dft calculation and then add up and do this you have to use a slightly different method so first problem first part of the problem we are aware from the definition of dft that the dft equation is something like this now since we are interested in k value equals to 0 let us put that value so add k is equal to 
we get the expression as x of 0 equals summation n from 0 to n minus 1 x of n into w into the power of 0 which we know is equal to 1. Hence, since the value of n is 8 in this given sequence, therefore x of 0 should be the sum of n which is 0 to 7 x of n. So, simply adding the inputs, all the 8 inputs should give you the answer for x of n. So, this is the method students, this is a trick that is involved. So, we take the sum of all the elements and that answer, the sum is equal to 20, is equal to x of 0. In the second part of the problem, they are asking you to determine what is the value of x of 4. See, x of 4 uh, is uh, sort of a midpoint. It, it's a sort of a midpoint. So, the first value is x of 0, for example. Uh, this is x of n, but just for reference, I am saying x of 0 is the first point. So, then you have x of 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this 4 will be the midpoint of the remaining points. So, in an 8-point sequence, leaving out the first one, we have 7 and x of 4 will be the midpoint. Always you have to remember x of 0 and x of 4 answers will be real valued provided the input is real. Okay. So, let us test the second case now. So, in the second case, once again you take the DFT equation. In that we let the value of 8 to be e n to be equal to 8 and the value of k equals to 4 because we want that value. So, x of 4 is given as n is equal to 0 to 7 x of n into w8 to the power of 4n. Now, w8 to the power of 4n could be simplified as shown expressing in exponential form e power of minus j2 pi by n into 4n. So, we observe that we can simplify. So, 8 cancels due to 2 and 4 and it becomes e power of minus j pi whole to the power of n and e power of minus j pi is equal to minus 1. Therefore, inserting this value in the above summation will give you x of n into minus 1 to the power of n. So, this is again a sort of a series, but the minus 1 to the power of n will alter the sign. Whenever the value of n is odd, you get negative. Whenever the value is even, it becomes plus. Therefore, for even index, we have the plus sign. For odd index, we will have a minus sign. So, the result is x of 0 minus x of 1 plus x of 2 minus x of 3 plus x of 4 minus x of 5 plus x of 6 minus x of 7. Substituting the respective values and simplifying, we get the result x of 4 as minus 8. In the next part of the problem, to find summation k is equal to 0 to 7 x of k. Now, this sort of structure summation k is equal to 0 to 7 x of k is only exhibited by the IDFT equation. This cannot be done using DFT. Therefore, considering the IDFT equation, we have x of n is equal to 1 by n times summation k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k into wn to the power of minus kn. In this equation, we are aware that capital N is equal to 8. Now, the objective is to eliminate this particular total factor term. We don't require that total factor term. And this is possible only either by making k value equals to 0 or n value equals to 0. The k value cannot be made 0 because we have to have the term x of k. So, the only obvious choice we have is putting n is equal to 0. Now, when you insert the value n is equal to 0, this is what we get. x of 0 equals 1 by 8 summation n from 0 to 7 x of k. Now, rearranging the terms, you get the summation that we wanted. Summation n from 0 to 7 x of k. 8 is multiplied with x of 0. We know the value of x of 0 is 1 and we get the answer is 8. Moving on to the fourth part of the problem, here we are asked to find what is 
summation k from 0 to 7 magnitude of x of k the whole square. This can be found using Parseval's theorem. So we put the result from Parseval's theorem as summation n from 0 to n minus 1 x of n magnitude square is equal to 1 by n times summation k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of k the whole square. Or since we are interested in the summation alone, the n can be moved to the other side. So we get n times of the summation n between 0 to n minus 1 x of n magnitude square. Now since in the problem we know n is equal to 8, let's apply that value. So the limits become 0 to 7, here n becomes 8, so it is 8 times, once again limits are from 0 to 7. Expanding the summation and substituting the various values of x of n and simplifying it will give you the answer which is as shown here. Therefore, this particular sum is equal to 864. So this is how the problems can be solved and problems of this sort uh, can be asked for 8 marks or 10 marks depending on how many parts are there in that particular problem. Thank you all.